Hi, welcome everybody. that we used in the last lecture in new letter uh, in kn sorry uh, distances was a list so we are trying to append the calculated distance of the train data of the column x so you go ahead with the distance calculating it and appending it and then we are using the sort okay distance dot sort then we are trying to sort the distance list and by taking the item getter so i think you are confused about the operator dot item getter a one So item getter one will take so item getter you use in Python dot item uh, dot item getter uh, in the bracket you can use n as well to take the nth element from uh, a specific one. So here we are trying to take the first element. So by to, to capture a specific element we use the dot getter function. <coughs> And so. Before we go ahead today, I have something else to tell you, and maybe we can do something. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Let's see. Is everybody here? I don't know. Okay. Not many. Uh, Sujit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the explanation of the question uh, problem, which was given in the uh, complete competition channel, uh, I think it needs once more uh, explanation of those questions. So, yeah, I think I think one more thing is like every participant needs to come here and don't rely on YouTube videos for more clarity. They should attend yeah, yes. the lecture and get this thing right. Yes, so, of course, because that's why we have uh, done in a live mode. Otherwise, YouTube videos are available in plenty amount. Yeah, so or I could have just that. record it and give it to you in my own time. I don't need to burn my days time into it, right? So it's okay. And if you, if your friends and other people are just relying on YouTube videos, I would expect you guys to convey to them. I will repeat your uh, competition. So this is one of the challenge actually, not the competition. Uh, competition will be further ahead. This is challenge that I want, uh, I wanted to give you because this is a very simple data set. Very simple. So it and and I have told you very simple classification as well to do. So what objective of this one is like whatever you have learned till now, I want to see that if you have been able to understand this and use the Python program that we I have already given to you uh, and generate something out of it or not. So if you just open the challenge, if you see it's one dot pdf, you would be able to see that the challenge is about using an AIDL dataset. The data set will have multiple columns, which will represent multiple features. Okay, so which represent multiple features? In that multiple columns, I'm trying to say that you have one column, or you have two columns, which is like healthy control, mild cognitive impairment, and Alzheimer disease. Okay, so there will be these three columns as well in the data set. And then there will be values one or zero, representing one for active, zero for not active. And then, so what you have to do is you have to just classify them into ST and non-ST. Okay, and non-ST will have two of their columns merged together, which is cognitive impairment, mild cognitive impairment, and uh, Alzheimer's disease. So I'm just converting both of them in a sense that you're trying to do 
uh, a classification between healthy control and non healthy control based on the features that you have been given so for this state, for this specific problem you are going to use 30% of the data set as test data set and 70% of the data set as trained data set okay and we actually can do everything uh, in this one uh, till what we have covered in the last lecture so i don't think we should have a problem in that at least you guys should give it a try because you need to represent data plot it and transformation and other stuff okay so i think i'm able to explain it properly if you still have doubts then you can reach back to me or to the instructors uh, for ta and they will be able to help you with it however uh, there is a few more things i think uh, should I begin or should I wait for a few more people because they are still joining? No, I think it's already 8.37, so we can okay. start. So uh, one uh, more thing that I have seen that some of you, uh, some of you might uh, have already told me that uh, I might be fast or I might be a bit, uh, you know, you, some of you are completely new to this. So to assess that and to help you with uh, the thing, first thing is, okay, first question first. Uh, the uh, so KNN module I gave to all of you uh, is every was everyone able to run it in Spider and test it? So how many of you did it? Just show me the thumbs up. And how many of did you not? Just show me some other smiley. Quick, just react. Okay. So very few of you. So this is pretty, if you, if you are not ready to help yourself, I can't help you in any way. And so if you are coming to this session and attending it and not even attempting this at home when we are giving you the one day leave to attempt these things at your own age. So and coming and then using your time. So either of us are fool or either of us is a fool of doing this thing and I, from my own behavior, I think I am not one of them. So I would expect you to at least go through these uh, thing I've given you and at least try your own. That's what the TVs are for, no? You can ask them questions. So just to, uh, because we have completed one part of it, approximately like building a model that was KNN using the library. I'm putting a session tomorrow. Uh, PGNC, you can uh, do a session tomorrow. That will be only doubt clearing, doubt clearing session. It can be for half an hour, it can be for one hour, where TAs will be there. There will be two groups. Uh, I think everybody can make a note of it. Group A will have all the candidates who had prior experience with machine learning, but are facing some difficulty in terms of mathematics by the KNN or other stuff, or PCA. They will be in group A, who had previous experience, okay? And group A, Gaurav Garg, you will be taking tomorrow, individually. Solving their doubts and uh, other stuff. Can you switch on the camera okay. and say yes? Yeah. So okay. group A you will take and uh, you will clear out there. I think you have all the modules that we have covered. It will be strictly from the module. No outside questions should you should entertain because there will be students, number of many number of students, it will be a problem. So your objective should be for other people who have a previous experience in Python or any other programming language and facing difficulty will go to group A. Group B will have students who have no idea about still that how can you build a model, okay? So in that group, Vishal Gaur and Ganeshwar Rao will be taking that group for those uh, students who have no idea and uh, who, who will require help in building a model. So Vishal Gaur and Ganeshwar Rao, I think he is not here, so he will be there. So what your task will be that you will pick any data set that we have still given now, and you will try to give them a visualization as well as build a model in front of them, with them, and let them build it with you as well. So if they are facing any problem in that, uh, you can help me, help them in those situations, okay? So these are basically uh, so strictly related to those things. Yes, please. Yes, Suji. Uh, so I will request all of you guys, whoever is present in the meeting, please inform your friends as well uh, to come up tomorrow with all your problems whoever is new or experienced, please spread it. So PGANC, I would request you to make two groups on Slack itself by vote or something, okay? That 
people who want to go in group a who want to go in group b i'll tell you very specifically don't try to group a in everyone please because group a will go faster than compared to group b so if you want to understand something very slowly or something uh, uh, you can you should attend this one and the objective of specifically both the tas or all three of you is to give them i will be in both the groups attending both of them uh, so it will be your objective is for group a to tell them they are clear out their understanding but limited to what we have teach or we have we have taught yet additionally you don't need to go deeper into mathematics the mathematics i have covered is sufficient enough if we want to go more deeper into mathematics take a no, note of those group members or students who want to do that we'll arrange a next or a next alternative grouping session on those only and that will be taken by freya itself in teaching how to calculate eigen values and other stuff if they want to calculate the matrix or something else okay so uh, specifically group a uh, gaurav gar you will be taking uh, this one which is uh, completely uh, implementation and any doubts in pc and other stuff they have whether as group b yeah. you will try to implement everything from the scratch from them using the library i repeat using the library where there is gaurav gar you will be going through the formulation as well the so group b will be just so group b specifically i can tell you for those people who doesn't have a fund computational foundational background at all and just want to build a model and be uh, proficient in building a model through any data set they encounter in the future okay i hope that will help you all <clears throat> if it still it remains and you have more doubt you can ping to me and then i'll take a session but uh, try not to take that one with me because i tend to go faster i can't help it i process things faster so i speak faster as well so uh, i'll try to go slow as much as possible in today's lecture as well in teaching you so today we are going to cover a very basic uh, in terms of modeling which will be naive bias and bayesian probability distribution function so it is just going to be a probability so we'll go ahead with that starting okay so here we go <clears throat> so we have a basic fundamental of what is bayes theorem i think everybody knows what bayes theorem is and uh, you should not have a problem in that so this is the formula for the bayes theorem i will write it here as well so bayes theorem uh, says that p given a by b which is that you want to calculate the probability of a given b is true it will be probability of b given a by probability of a by probability of b okay so <clears throat> this is a general theorem for a general formula for bayes theorem i think we all have done it in an elementary school and uh, so we we'll just go through the formulation and then we we'll are trying to implement them to the python program i'll try to go slow as slow as i can till i fall asleep and then you guys can pick me up if i am falling asleep so we have this theorem and if x is the input variable and y is the output variable we can rewrite the above equation as this i hope there is no problem in that the naive part of the algorithm is that we make the naive assumption that the classes are conditionally independent what does this mean is that the classes have features and i we think in the naive bias we call so there can be many questions people can ask you that why naive bias is so naive so naive bias is so naive because it doesn't take into account the dependency of a feature onto the other one it treat every of the feature as independent one so all the classes are conditionally independent that is the effect of predictor x1 on a given class y is independent of the values of other predictors that is x2 x3 or some other so we can rewrite the equation px uh, by px given y is true is px by y x1 by y by px 2y till x and y right so we can remove the denominator of px as it remains constant while solving for y and introduce the proportionality so then we rewrite the equation so p of y given x is true is constant where p x1 by y multiplied by x2 by y and similarly p by p y algorithm so this is a basic idea of naive bayes algorithm that we have already covered in elementary school so i don't think there is a problem in that now how do we do that in python so i will firstly go through the notebook and then again i'll show you in the spider but please go home and try yourself in the spider because i can only tell you once until you teach yourself 
doing things again and again, where the variables are going, how the values are changing, it will not be clear to you. I can't make you God in 15 days. I can just make you understand them. So <clears throat> import pandas as PD, simple. We are just importing the values. Here we are trying to read the data file, which, we, which is beta.csv, and we do the data thing. Okay, everybody do this thing quickly. Load the data set and you are able to see the data set. Okay, so now I go ahead and then I am trying to group here. So I, we have all seen this lecture in lecture one or lecture two that we are trying to group by outlook, by temperature, humidity, wind, and place, right? And then we are trying to count the values of uh, the size of the specific thing. The temperature for play we have is the, is the template. So it is temperature versus play. So we are seeing the cool, no, we have one value, yes, three values. Hot, no, two values, yes, two values. Mild, no, two values, yes, four values. <clears throat> so we have all these values representing it. So I would ask you to run this line as well, and then you get temp. So for temp, you are looking at this one. You can change it to change it to windy, you can change it to humidity, you can change it to outlook, and you will have different outputs. Okay, in your own data set, if you look at uh, the uh, the whole data, so you will have 14 rows and five columns. Now we want to make prediction. So we will now use the naive Bayes algorithm to find the probability of playing tennis under a given weather condition. This is a very standard data set I have chosen because some of you have no experience with it so that you can, if you try to even search it or try to understand it online, you might find a similarity. People explaining with the same data set, which would be easier for you as well. We have used plenty of data sets till now. You can switch to any of the data set and try the same thing uh, on your, uh, your own time. So for example, to calculate the probability that you should play tennis for the following conditions, where the outlook is sunny, temperature is mild, humidity is normal, and windy it is false. We will calculate the probability of y that is yes to the x that is sunny, mild, normal, and false. False was our windy condition, right? So we'll go to probability of outlook to sunny, given y is equal to yes, probability of temperature to mild, y is equal to yes, probability of humidity to normal, y is equal to yes, probability of windy to false, y is equal to yes. And then where, where our probability of y is yes in any case scenario. To check the prediction will be the maximum of p y of yes by x and p of y no by x. So this is the, the step that we are going to use. So now we are going to calculate that one by one into the using the Python program. So we have to see, we have to say how many of total yes is there and how many of total no's are there. So total play is total yes per total no. So total play is 14 because you have 14 rows. Okay. Now here for looking for outlook in the terms of checking that if we have a sunny and it is a yes, then how many uh, samples are there? So there are two samples in this scenario. Now here I'm writing a probab, again a function for finding probability. I'll show you in the Aspire itself when we go into the digging deep where we are trying to do what? We are giving four different, five different arguments as we discussed here. Yeah. So as we discussed here, we are giving five different arguments, which is outlook value, temperature value, humidity value, windy value, and play value. Okay, so we are giving all this one. And uh, one second. And then we have, okay, so now we can try to calculate the outlook of play. So we are trying to see the outlook play, where outlook play, we're ch checking into the outlook, where outlook value and play value by play by play value. We're trying to calculate this value. We'll see how the value changes. So if you try to look at this thing, you will be able to very easily uh, say, that let's say that you have, uh, if you just try to look at the data set, which was here, okay? 
So it's almost a complete data set that you're looking at. So I would like you to look at that and you look at it and you'll see that when your outlook of outlook values are three and two, right? So when I go to outlook value, right? And then we look at the uh, outlook value. So we have yes and no for sunny. So sunny, you have five values. So in which you have two yeses and three no. Okay. So this will, you will get an output if you do outlook of outlook val. Okay. So if I just try to get an output of this one, I'll get three and two, three keeping as no and two keeping as yes. If I do this both of the things, which is outlook value and play value, I just get two values. Why? Because because outlook value and play value will be <laughs> equivalent to now play value is yes. We have selected that we want to see the priority for playing yes. So how many values we have? We have only three values. Sorry, two values where it was yes. So we get an output two here. Now I divide it by the play and the play values. Okay, so play by play values, we have total nine. So two by nine will be the output of this one, which will be something around 0 0.22. Similarly, we'll go for temp play, humidity play, windy play, and play. No, no changes. Okay, now we calculate the probability by multiplying all of the values that we have got and we return the probability here. Now we'll make prediction depending on the output with the highest probability. That is, if yes, uh, if it is a probability of yes is higher than no, then we'll go to output play. If it is a no, then we'll not go out to play. So now I write again a function, which is which is 54 inputs, outlook value, temperature value, humidity value, and windy value. The priority of yes will be priority of finding priority of outlook value, temperature value, humidity value, and windy value. So when your program will come on this line, it will implement this function. Okay, and you will get a probability of this one. Similarly, when you got, so you will get a probability of yes. Now to calculate the probability of no, you will do this line. And you will have this value again. So now you will get yes and no, and you will compare both of them and you will get an output. Okay, so let's try and run both of these definitions. So when we predict it, according to value, you see the probability that you should play tennis is this much, and you should not play tennis is this one, so you should not play tennis today because of the condition. Okay. Now let's try to look at using program. Everybody can see my screen. I'll zoom it without you telling me. I hope everybody can see this now. Perfect. So is it visible to everyone? Can you just give me a thumbs up? Oh, perfect. So now we are just, I'll use a debugger here and try to run this. So now we are at here import. So we are going to import the line and then we are going to read the data. Okay. We got the data here. So data is, okay, this will be small. So now I'll use magnify. So we have the full data here. I hope this is also visible. To everyone. So you have outlook, temperature, humidity, windy, and play. And you have 14 rows here telling you how what are the values. Now I'll close this and I'll come back to this one. And now I just look at the data. So we have already looked at it. And now we are looking at outlook. So we are grouping them by the terms of outlook, and now you have five. So overcast, yes, rainy, no, rainy, yes, sunny, no, sunny, yes. So we see all the grouping. 
Similarly, we group by temperature, humidity, windy, and play. So play is series to yes and no. How many total conditions are there? So nine is there for yes, and five is five are there for no. Nine are there for yes, and five are there for no. So we are just trying to get to total yes and total no. So we, if you look at the total yes, will be, uh, sorry, total yes is nine values, and total no is five values. Okay. Now we'll try to look at total play. So total play is yeah. The so total play is you have fourteen values, nine plus five. Now this is our definition, which is find probability, and this is our definition for prediction play. So I. Try to just run through the definition, but sensitive definition will go to the next definition. Where it will go to the next definition, and then you you have asked for outlook value. You have given an outlook value to be sunny, temperature value to be mild, humidity value to be high, and windy value to be false. Right now, you go to these, run for these variables, and now we go to the prediction play. So we're trying to do the predict play based on these four variables that we have given here, and it will go to this one. You see here, so when I'm trying to go to this function, it will automatically implement this function. So I'll go into step into this function. And I reach here. Now, as soon as I reach here, I want to calculate the probability of yes. So it will go into the function of find probability. And the function for find probability is here. OK, so now I will go inside this function. So I went here. Now we have find probability and these <coughs> values, which were here. So now if I go just down, now you look at outlook value, temperature value, humidity value, and other stuff, right? You zoom it, you look at outlook value, it is sunny. Then you have humidity value high. Then you have temperature value as mild. So all these values is there. Now we calculate for probability of outlook play. So as I said to you, outlook of outlook value by given play value. So this will be how many values? This will be only two, right? So let's try it out what will happen if I just do it. So I want to see without running this line here is outlook. This is the way you can debug any of the program and you can uh, see for yourself as well. Okay, this is for your home practice actually. So outlook for outlook value. So this output here is see three and two, correct? So three for no and two for yes, as we discussed using by looking at just the data set. Now, if I just do this thing and also look at the play value, play value. Okay, it's play value. Sorry, outlook value, play value. So now we have only two because there are only two conditions for playing yes. And we're calculating it for yes. So we can we look at this one, and now we have this thing, which is outlook value, play value, and by play of play value. So if I look at that, so play by play for play value, it will be nine. Okay. So now the output of this probability should be two divided by nine, which will be equal to 0 0.222, right? So let's see if that's our case here. So we run this line and we have the P outlook play and P outlook play, if we look here, you see it's 0 0.222, okay? Now, similarly, you will have temp play, humidity play, windy play and play. Correct. It is the same way as we have calculated. It will be similarly. It will be calculated. 
Now, <coughs> probability will be just multiplication of this one, and it will return the probability to the same function. So as soon as you return this, it will come to the probability no, because no probability yes is identified, and the probability yes is 0 0.014. Okay. Now, in the same fashion, if we calculate the no, I'm not going to repeat the step. So in the same fashion, we'll go to the find probability and calculate the probability for no. And then now we will be able to look at probability of no is 0 0.02. Okay. So now we'll go for print, what is probability of playing yes. So probability you should play tennis is 0 0.014. And then I'll just go from here only. And then here you have probability if you should of playing no. Okay, so we have probability that you should not play tennis is 0 0.02 here. Okay, now we do the comparison, which is very easy, and so our outcome comes as prediction play that you should not play tennis today. It is as same as we did. Okay, right. So I give you a couple of minutes for this thing, and then we'll go to Gaussian probability distribution. Okay, so now we'll go for the Gaussian probability distribution. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with this one. So let's see. So for Gaussian probability distribution, you will have uh, is like distribution generally you use it for all the uh, cases. So we generally believe, I think everybody must be familiar with this sort of shape. So sorry, it's not exactly what I wanted to draw. But So this bell-shaped shape, we are all familiar with this one. So <clears throat> what we do here is, so Gaussian distribution can be, Gaussian is a distribution, uh, continuous distribution, and it can be represented as P of Y is equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi sigma to power minus Y by two of sigma squared. Now your mu is here. The mean of the distribution, sigma is the variance of distribution, and y is the continuous variable for minus. So, so where y will belong from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So now the probability of 
the probability of y being in the range of a comma b is given by the integral which is p a wait i clear this one so probability of a it to be the given range for a y b can be written as 1 by sigma root of 2 pi integral of a to b p minus as we have seen before y minus mu square by 2 sigma square Dy. Okay, so we have seen that this is for a given range a comma b. Now the integral for the arbitrary a and b cannot be evaluated analytically, and so the value of integral has to look up in the table. So we can look at that. So if I try to look this whole thing into a plot, so this is p of x. Then here it will be. You can have mean, you can have median, you can have mode. It will be represented by sigma. Now, sorry, mu. Then your this whole thing, variance, and <clears throat> this is your x. Okay. So now for p of x, we have already seen it is one. By sigma two pi e minus x minus mu square by two sigma square Gaussian. Okay, so <clears throat> we are trying. So by norm normal uh, by the Gaussian distribution, your sixty eight percent of the uh, area is within the plus minus sigma. Okay. One sigma, you can say one sigma or sigma. <clears throat> Now, the total area under the curve under the curve is normalized to one. Somebody asked me something. So I think e raised to the power y minus uh, e. Okay, I deleted it. E raised to the what is it? But so I think e raised to the power y minus mu raised square. Yeah, yeah, it is like that only. So e raised to the power. So yeah, it might because it's a small one. So it is like e raised to the power minus, and then here you have as you written y minus mu. Or square, and then by two sigma square. Okay. Or oh, I wrote y minus mu square. Okay. I'm so sorry about that if I've written that, but uh, this is the formula. So I'll just rewrite it again if somebody has a doubt. So p of y is equal to one by sigma. Root to pi uh, e. Then you have this in the fact part of this one where y minus mu square by two sigma square. I think I wrote it like this one only. Okay. So <clears throat> now, so this is this one, and so I'm extremely sorry if I did that. I was unintentional. So the total probability, so total area under the curve will be normalized to one, and the probability to the integral. So that will be. P of minus infinity to y to infinity is equal to one by two uh, uh, pi one by sigma two pi where infinity infinity to infinity you will do and similarly we will just merge up the values that we have written so it will be y minus mu whole square by two sigma square dy. Is equal to one. Okay, so <clears throat> this is uh, for the uh, end of the curve normalized to one. Now 
for a different uh, we can, we can also draw a distribution or a relationship between gaussian and binomial uh, distribution so it can be derived from the binomial of uh, position uh, sorry position assuming that your p is finite and n is very large so we can if you want i can go for the derivation but let's assume that you understand now the uh, Gaussian distribution theorem, and then if we have to see that, uh, however, it is uh, Gaussian distribution also important because of the central uh, central limit theorem. So if you guys are aware of that, it's fine. So if you are not, then yeah, I can just tell you that uh, central limit theorem tells us that under a wide range of circumstances, the probability the probability distribution that describes the sum of random variables. Tends towards the Gaussian distribution as the number of terms in the sum tending to infinity. <clears throat> so now we will go for the code. Okay, you can look at this code. I'll try to go ahead very quickly with this part. The reason for going quickly is I have already told you the uh, uh, purpose of the definition function and other stuff, and I want you to go ahead and try this in this file and look how the variables are changing. So that will that is sort of your homework to understand how these values are getting calculated. However, they're very straightforward. We are again importing panel and you're reading the data set, Heberman, a different data set. You're using the uh, square root function pi and exponential. For that, you need a math library. So you're using that from the math library. And then here you are making a definition which is separate by class. It's separating the dictionary of separate classes of data set. So it is just going to separate the data set as per the different classes. This definition is to calculate the mean of the numbers. So you see just simple sum of the uh, numbers by length of the numbers. Then this is for a standard deviation. We are calculating average and the variance, so square root of the variance. Then you have the mean standard, and then you get all these definitions. It's a very straightforward mathematical formula. I will not go into it, and this is very straightforward as well. So I can tell you that SQRT is for square root, where you have the variance, and then you're trying to sum. And then here is your average value, which you are defined with mind. Then STDEV is for standard deviation. So these are the keywords that we have used here. Now we are trying to get a, a splitting the classes and then calculate statistics for each row. We are going to do that. For that, we have separated by obviously by each classes and data set and their class value and rows in different items. Then we calculate the probability, which is the x versus x of the mean and the standard deviation. So Gaussian probability distribution function for x, where exponent is calculated. Okay, so exp is for exponential, mean is you know, a standard deviation, you know, square root. And then you're using the pi for the pi, and then standard deviation into the exponent. Okay, now you're trying to calculate here the class probability. So your total rows probability. So for class value, class summary. Okay, so probability. So calculating class probability summaries and rules. So best label, best probability. Oh, I was here. No, I think so. So calculate class probability, summaries and rows. So total rows and summaries, we are trying to get a total number of rows for both the classes combined. Calculating the probabilities, defining it as a dictionary, empty dictionary here, as we have seen in the first class. <laughs> for class value, class summaries and summaries of item, you could have just done this with this as well. I hope you remember that. So class value, class summaries and summaries of item, probability, class value. Calculating the summary of the class value of 0, 2, uh, 0 and 2 and the float by the float rows. Similarly, you're calculating the class value by the mean and the standard deviation. That same thing that we have done as of using the for loop uh, for calculating the, uh, the way we are going to the simple definition. Here we are trying to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. And then we calculate the probability and return them to the probability dictionary. So we are trying to add them to the probability of the class value. Now we are trying to predict. So this is a function to predict. 
given the summaries and row probabilities, so if we calculate the class probability using this definition, then you will have the best level, best probability, none and minus one. And we'll go for, for class probability, probability, and probability dot items. Since probability is a dictionary, you can access the dictionary by using dictionary dot items. It will be accessing that. So if the best label is none, or the probability is greater than best, uh, best probability, your best probability is equal to probab probability and best label is equal to class value. Okay. And here again, you're doing the random. So you're just using the random for the train test split. We have done this in the last class. I'm not going to repeat over it. So your data is the data, split is 0 0.7, train data empty, test data empty. You're performing the train test split. After this, you will, your data would be distributed into train and test set. <coughs> You're trying to summarize the data by the class, predict them by the list and for the row. Now you want to find the accuracy of the test data and the predicted data. For that, you will just use the uh, real value and the predicted value and calculate the accuracy for them. Okay. And then you will try to calculate the accuracy here. The accuracy for the test data is 75.82% that we have received. Now I did cover all of this in the terms of formula that I have just discussed to you. These are all definitions and very straightforward if you just do it again in the spider and you can always easily see how the variables are changing with every loop and how they are getting assigned in the variable explorer. So you will be able to see every single value. If you want, I can take it maybe uh, in the spider and explain it to you, but I would expect you to do that uh, on your own. Reason being uh, that you will be able to understand much better, and if you have any doubt, you can come back. So, predicted for zero, you have one test data, zero is this much. Okay. Now, naive bias using scikit learn. So, now we have all, we have used the, uh, we have used the Python formula here to calculate, uh, use the math formula to calculate it. But we can also do that using a single step, which is by using the standard library, which has all the things and builds into it. So what for what you're going to use this, you are going to use the scikit-learn library and you're going to use the Gaussian distribution. So we'll select the column and then we will have, uh, we're going to select the data, then you have the scalar for pre proxy mean max scalar for scaling the data and then you do the transformation on the data column and then you get the data. So you have, so you have age, year, nodes, and status. Similarly, your X is the data column and the Y is the data status. And then you go for X from ahead and you have this one. So Y, you just remove the status from the X. So you have Y is the standard label now that you are having. Okay. So now from sklearn.model selection, we are going to use a train test split instead of using R function, we are using it and then distributing in them into the one by three ratio or random state is 42. You can assign any random state, one, zero, anything. You have X as the training data and the Y as the test data. It will split them into the X train and X test, Y train and Y test. Sorry, X is your train, sorry. X is your data set, Y is your label. So it will split them into X train, X test, Y train and Y test. Now you have the length of X train and Y train. So you have X train is 204 and Y train is also 204. Then you have X test is 102 and Y test is 102. Now I just need to not need to do any mathematical operations that we used before. So I just so what steps I performed is I have split my data set into into different parts and uh, which is training set and test set and trying to just fit a function over it to predict. What are the what, what is my possible accuracy? So sklearn.naivize import Gaussian naive here. So we are importing that. And sklearn.matrix we are importing the accuracy score. So we are designing a classifier here by calling the Gaussian naive base. Okay. So here our, uh, the classifier to CLF model object is ready. Then we are trying to fit this with X train and Y train. So X train is our training data set, Y train is our label. We're trying to fit them. And then once we fit the model, we are trying to predict it. So for making a prediction, I so this CLF is now a trained model based on these two data sets. So based on these two data points. So now if I want to predict based on this model, so you can imagine that you have a model and if you want to predict it, it's like a matrix multiplication that you are trying to do. So what it is going to do is you have to supply uh, with the 
set data set and this test data set will be data set which you have distributed before without the label so you put this way these value into the predict and it will give you the output which is a prediction here okay so it will give you the uh, probabilities of prediction that it belongs to this class or this class and then you calculate the accuracy so accuracy will be calculated by the given y test which was your true value then prediction which was made by the model and so normalization is true and then we multiply it by 100 just to get the percentage and then we print the accuracy and here we get the accuracy 74.5 Okay, so using library, we can just implement them uh, in just, so we just use actually one, two, three, and four to, to train the model and to uh, calculate the accuracy. Whether as if you want to go mathematically to write these things, you have to use all these definitions, you know, to do so and then get the output. Okay. Okay, I will give you five minutes to run it on yourself and then I hope you guys are here and not sleeping. So. Right, so now we'll talk about, can you please tell how to run Spider? You can just uh, export this file as Python file, open it in Spider and run it. So I think TS will be able to help you if you are not able to do that. Or you can do other thing is like copy them definition by definition, cell by cell and try to run it. But if you just export it as Python, it will do the job as well. Okay, so next topic that we are going to cover is logistic regression. So I'm just going to utilize my next seven minutes and tell you a basic theory about logistic regression, and then we'll cover the other things in the next lecture. Okay. Uh... So logistic regression is a transformation. So what you want is so what you want here is uh, you want to just probabilistically model the binary variable. So you use this. So you can predict a class probability function. So just uh, as in, so for example, if no, you might not be aware of the other model, so leave it. So <clears throat> You want to interpret, uh, so when you want to make an interpretable model, you want to understand the model, or you want to understand the decision boundary is smooth, you think the decision boundary should be smooth and linear, all at these positions, you can use the logistic regression. So you can use uh, uh, logistic regression to make a prediction that are bounded between zero and one, okay, and predict the binary outcome to the linear model. model. So the mathematical intuition. So let's say that sigmoid logistic function to get, uh, So for this, we use a sigmoid logistic function. Okay, I use the blackboard. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. So now for sigmoid, uh, for for standard logistic functions or sigmoid function, we uh, assume that let's say that we want to plug a function which has the continuous values from infinity, so from minus infinity to infinity. So let's say that you have x which belongs to infinity to minus infinity. Okay, so x belongs to you can say also like this minus infinity to infinity. So now for this one, if you want to fit them in the function, like say theta x, it will be equal to e raised to power x by one plus e raised to power x. <coughs> you can also write it like this one by one plus e raised to power minus x. So this is very familiar function, which is a sigmoid function that we have seen, and the values for this function goes from uh, zero to one in the y-axis. Okay, so it will be <clears throat> zero to one. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, sigmoid function. So let's see at some of the properties we can calculate that when so if we want to calculate the uh, x is equal to let's say x is equal to zero and your theta is equal to 0 0.5 then theta of x will be 1 by 1 plus e raised to power 0 which will equal to 0 0.5 okay so this is calculating when x is equal to zero. When uh, let's say it is very large, which is going approximately to one. So it will be theta of x going to one by one plus zero is equal to one. Okay. And then when it is very less, so it will be theta x one by one plus infinity which is equal to zero so we see that the maximum and the minimum value lies between zero and one <clears throat> so you can have any sigma function for an output uh, for for any unbound output to x it will be belonging to theta <clears throat> okay so you can convert a linear regression into a logistic regression output just with the sigma function for that, we have done the linear regression. So I'm just going to use it. So let's say that uh, you can substitute it with the uh, output in the terms. We have y hat is equal to so on. So for x, you will have to theta x is equal to y hat and it will be 1 by 1 plus e raised to the power minus y hat as we have done and it will be converted to 1 by 1 plus e raised to the power minus so on okay theta n to f n Okay, so this is what we have uh, in terms of converting a linear regression to the uh, output into the logistic regression output. Now, we can also look at the mathematical property of uh, logistic regression, but we will cover this one in the next class. If we are out of time, we will look at the mathematical property as well in the next class. Okay, so... <clears throat> So in the next time we'll try to cover the logistic regression, which will be I think day after tomorrow, uh, and their implementation as well. So for tomorrow you will have this grouping thing, and uh, you can please uh, do that on Slack. If the PGANC doesn't do it, I would ask you to remind them to make a 
poll for two groups, which will be group A and group B. Wherever you want to get into, you can get into, and then you will be uh, helped tomorrow according to timing. Additionally, PGNC will ask Gaurav, you and Vishal. Uh, Gaurav, you are in India anyway, and Ganeshwar is in India. Vishal, you are in Finland, so all of you will match up your time with the IST, and then you will suggest the time. So I think, uh, uh, Vishal, uh, do you have an office 